So we're talking about the yin yang relationship of the CEO and the COO, the chief executive officer and the chief operations officer, otherwise known as the visionary and the integrator. If you're a big fan of Gina Wickman's work in traction like we are. Hello and welcome to the Remarkable CEO Podcast, a show dedicated to chiropractors who want to transform their job into a business so that they can have a remarkable practice as part of a remarkable life, not instead of one. With your hosts, Dr. Pete Camiolo and Dr. Stephen Franson. What's up, Remarkables? Welcome back to another episode of the Remarkable CEO Podcast. I'm Dr. Stephen Franson. And I'm Dr. Pete Camiolo. We are having an energetic conversation today. We're talking about one of the most challenging and rewarding relationships you can have in your business. It's literally the business that will catapult you to the next level. Regardless of where you are right now, if you do not have this relationship in place yet, just putting it in place is going to take you to the next level. If you have this relationship in place, optimizing it will absolutely take you to the next level and tee you up, set you up to even get to the levels beyond that, right? So we're talking about the yin yang relationship of the CEO and the COO, the chief executive officer and the chief operations officer, otherwise known as the visionary and the integrator. If you're a big fan of Gina Wickman's work in traction like we are, this is an incredible relationship. This was a game changer for me. It's the thing that's allowed us to create a remarkable practice as part of a remarkable life, not instead of one. And now it's what allows us to build the business that supports the remarkable life and not compete with it. Dr. Pete, uh, man, this is the most challenging and rewarding part of our professional lives. Yeah. So this is the next level. So this conversation can't be, uh, the timing couldn't be better, doc, just because of many of the conversations that I'm having right now with many of you CEOs who I know also listen to this podcast. So we listen to you, we hear you, and we're going to have conversations that are very relevant and meaningful. So this is one of those that, um, we got to keep close, close to, uh, a home because this one, it continues to, um, it be a challenge and also, um, uh, just ripe with lots and lots of opportunities and in risk. So we're going to keep it uh, on the forefront here. So today I want to just start this doc by starting at the top, which is um, understanding the objectives of the roles. Okay. So remember the CEO's position on the accountability chart, there's really three primary functions or objectives of this position. Number one is vision casting. It's your number one role. And so in order to think about this, in order to cast vision, you must be looking ahead by nature of being a vision caster, you have to have not only looked ahead, you also have maybe had to journey ahead, which means you've had to spend some time with people who are ahead, or you've taken some time to go down the road and you, you've been down the road a bit and, and you, you've seen what's coming. Um, you've got a level of insight into um, you know, what's, what's going on right now and what's coming next. And based on that, this is where we're going. That's a, an absolutely vital role to play. And it's not a one time I checked the box, I did the vision casting, what next? It's you're constantly casting vision, you're casting vision for all 15 of the primary functions of the business, all the, all the parts of your di you know, the, the business from the domains, you're looking at it and you're casting vision for every element of the business because every element of the business, every person and role in the business requires vision. And they need that vision to come from the leadership team and that leader is you. So that's number one is vision casting. Number two is you, you based on your vision are able to then determine and help the team identify what is important now. And this gets distilled down through all 15 primary functions of your business. It's not just, all right guys. So what's important right now is uh, we need to get more, uh, we need to get more new patients. All right, that's it. Let's go. You know, it's like you, 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 you may have a need to increase uh, attraction in your office. But I'll tell you what, if you just get more new patients and your conversion is, is not working and retention is not working and collections isn't working and the team isn't trained and those things aren't happening, you're just spinning your wheels. You're throwing a bunch of money and energy and time and focus towards getting new people and your business doesn't grow. It actually implodes and you lose two employees in the process because you haven't really inspired the team and gotten everybody on track. So this is you is as a, a leader, uh, the, the person who's called to lead the business is you're leading the business through casting vision and through helping each and every person understand what's important right now. And now being this, this quarter, let's say, so we teach in now next and ultimately. So what's important now 
is, is this next 90 days, let's say. Let's use that as an example. The third objective is determining what's important next. And this goes back to this, uh, that visionary role, that, that CEO role is what's important next is I'm looking ahead, strategically thinking ahead, and I'm, I'm constantly working on things that are a little bit away from where we are right now, but I need to do that so that when the rest of the team arrives th to camp, they've got, they've got the ability to do, start doing work, applying their skills, their talents, their genius to the work that needs to be done now because I did it when we were working on now, I was already doing what was coming next. So this concept that you're constantly staying two steps ahead, one, two steps ahead, you have to go down field just a little bit further so that when the team gets there, that's the role of the leader. That's your role as visionary. That's your role as a CEO. And there's a little bit of, there's a discomfort there because some of us, we have this tendency towards the owner operator to want to just go head down, bum up. And we don't want to have to get necessarily go and be strategic but you have to. And I know many CEOs who I get to work with, we're constantly having this conversation. So I know I'm speaking to you right now is that you have to live with that tension of now and next. So those are the three primary functions and objectives of the CEO role. And then when you compare that to the COO role, the three primary functions and objectives, the CEO's job is to lead the business. The COO's job then is to run the business, recognize the chain, the difference there, leading the business, and you just heard what I said, running the business, listen to this. So the objectives and the primary functions of the COO to run the business is number one objective is running the business means you're actually doing the SOP. So the, the, all the process, all the procedures in the office, the, the behind the scenes, the front of the scenes, every element that's happening in all 15 primary functions that is overseen the, the day to day operation of the organization of the business is underneath the leadership and accountability of that COO role. So the COO's role is to run the business, which means running each and every 15 functions, primary functions of the business, and the, the process and the procedures of that and what that looks like to do that. So that's a huge role to, to, to have, massive role. And, and, and that, that in and of itself is just, that's a full-time gig right there. And on top of that, in addition to that, the third objective, is what we call LMA or leadership management and accountability, which is the ability to, to lead the team. So now you've got a group of dynamic people, remember yin and yang, dynamic personalities, dynamic uh, people in a check in or check out CA role or a caregiver DC next to a business builder DC next to an entrepreneurial CEO DC. You've got all this dynamic energy going on in the office. And your role is to help lead and manage and hold all those folks accountable. Accountable to what? To what's important now, which is translated through very specific mechanisms and tools that we teach in our program, where each and every person knows what their objectives are, what their priorities are, and you're holding them accountable. I know that was an earful. It was a mouthful. But I'll tell you what, it's the, it's the dynamic of why you have the CEO and CEO, why there's a visionary, why there's an integrator. Dr. Steven, I had to start there. No, you know, it's the right place there, to start because the tone, now we can get into the dynamic. It's an incredible rich um, relationship, right? So it's just like, there's yeah. a lot going on and then we, and we liken it to the work marriage, right? So if it, we were just like trying to describe, you know, Pete and Mary's relationship, it's like, well, what does the father do? What does the mother do, right? It's like in the, in the Camillo household, these are the roles, these are the responsibilities that are organized underneath each of these functions, right? There's a, those are both big jobs with lots of details, but there's, you know, this categorically some primary categories of these are our, you know, this is our divide and conquer. We like to say unite and conquer, right? Like my friend Pat Chintempo always says, it's like, this is like, this is, I can't, I got this, you got that. And this is what we're going to do together, right? So there is a yin yang relationship in, in your home, Dr. Pete, as there is in mine. It's those differences that drive us crazy, but it's exactly those differences that make us powerful together as that yin yang dynamic, right? A, a, a metaphor I love around this is if you were to look at, you know, like an old sailing vessel, like, you know, the, the visionary's job is to be the person up in that crow's nest, right? Climb up that main mast, get in the crow's nest, get out the, the telescope or the binoculars, right? And you're looking ahead, right? So when you are, you're yelling down to somebody who's on the wheel and guess who that is? That's the COO who's actually functionally 
running the business, driving the ship, right? Yelling at everybody on the deck, right? But there's a communication going on between them. One of them is this is what's coming up ahead. The other person's role is getting it executed. And like, this is based on the information I'm getting from the visionary. Here's what we're going to do to integrate this team, right? So that's the difference between CEO and COO, and they have complementary roles. You can imagine as an owner operator where you don't have this dynamic, you're the fool that's running up and down, you know, you're letting go of the wheel, running up the mast, taking a look around, running back down the mast, grabbing the wheel again, trying to right the ship, right? You can imagine how exhausting it is. Some of you are listening right now and being like, oh my gosh, you just described my week. Oh my gosh, Branson. And is that, that's exactly what I feel like. And then you know what ends up happening. You stop running up the mast. Right. Mm-hmm. So you just stop looking at it and you just grab onto that wheel and be like, I'm just going to steer us through whatever comes our way. Right. And we all know what that experience is like. Right. So it's this beautiful yin yang relationship, compliment relationship where Dr. Pete, you talked about the responsibilities that are organized under each one of each one of those functions. I'm going to talk about the attributes, right? Because those responsibilities, those tasks call for somebody with a v- very specific skill set, experience, and attributes, the type of person that are naturally hardwired to be awesome at that. So listen to the yin yang in the qualities of these people, right? So if you're that CEO, you're high level, you're big picture, you're passionate and emotional, you're inspiring, you're driven, you're a creative genius, you have brute force tendencies. In other words, you do things through brute force, right? And your energy style is probably turbo, high thrust, right? You're the CEO, right? So your complement energy on the other side of this is your COO, okay? The COO, they have attributes that sound like this. They're logical and strategic. They're detail-oriented, high detail people. They love systems and structure and organization. They're a driver. They're a steady diesel engine, not a thrust engine. They're a, they're, they have tenacity and follow through. They, they GSD, they get shit done, right? They love execution. They're really attached to production, right? And they're highly tactical. They're no nonsense uh, very often. And, and that very often they come across as the bad cop. Why? Because they have to hold everybody accountable, including the CEO, right? So you've got a set of responsibilities. All those responsibilities are measurable. Those create statistics, metrics of what we call KPIs or key performance indicators. You are, you are accountable to the goals associated with your KPIs because those KPIs are simply measurements of the responsibilities that you've taken on by taking the seat on the accountability chart, right? So they're no nonsense. They're committed to results and output, and they're a problem solver. Man, if those, if, if those aren't complement personalities, Dr. Pete, I don't know what are. Yeah, so I love I love where you went with the attributes and describing that. So I think you know, as everyone's listening to you describe the running up and down the mast, if if that didn't cause you enough pain and and just you know create the picture, then um, just understanding that um, how would you be both of those people? Like think about the attributes you just described. The differences, the different attributes of the CEO and the COO. And how many of us have tried to be all of it, right? Like we're wearing both hats, CEO and COO. I know like we've, we can, you can try to do it all day long. It's just, they're completely different. They're different people. I remember when I really started studying this and and looking at it, I was like, wow, like I would have never been able to put into words what that is, but that is exactly it. Wow. And I saw, okay, so I am hardwired as I, cause I thought for a season, like, oh, I can do it all. I got it. I, I can do it. When I started reading the dynamic of a COO versus a CEO, I realized everything that was written about the CEO was like, yep, I love that. I can do that. Yep, that's about it. You know, for the majority, like 95%. And then when I looked at the COO, I was like, yeah, that is not me. And then I recognized like, man, I'm doing so many of those things. I'm required yes. to do so many things. I've, 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 I've chosen, I've picked that stuff up and I'm taking it with me. But, and so I just want to speak and to you right now. And it's draining the life out of me. And it's draining the life out of me. So if you feel that right now, and I know some of you do, it's okay to feel it. But the first step is to recognize it. It's not okay to stay there because that will be the limiting factor that will prevent you from going and growing to the next level. It actually will also, it'll cause issues for you long-term. Like you can't, you won't be able to, to, to sustain that for long. Like you said, eventually you're going to drop once. You'll just stop climbing up the mast. You're just going to grab the steering wheel. You're going to start driving through. You're just going to say, whatever comes our way, we're just going to, we're going to, We'll go right through it or whatever. And, and it's a very, it's a reactive business. You're literally living in, in, 
in firefighter mode. You're, you're, whether it's team or marketing or systems or whatever it is, it's, you, you feel like you're in reaction mode. You're constantly like, there's another thing that I got to deal with, another thing that went wrong. I'm dealing with another issue. And, and a lot of that comes from just, I haven't been up high enough. I haven't taken the time to really look ahead. I haven't been communicating well with this, with a COO. We haven't been doing these things. So I'm more saying to you, hey, it's okay that you were aware of it, that you're there. It's not okay to stay there, Dr. Steven. It's not. And I know yeah. for us in our remarkable CEO program and our remarkable COO program, we have taken this burden on to say for our profession, you know what? This is a significant issue. And for us to truly fulfill our mission to restore health for humanity, we as a profession, as an industry, we've got to get this right. And Dr. Steven, I know you and I, that is our heartbeat. That is our commission right now is to say, we're going to work on this as a profession. This is what's required for us to truly navigate, going to your analogy, the seas that are ahead of us. And what we saw coming, both you and I, we saw something has to change for our profession. We can't just keep doing what we've been doing. It's got to look different for this next decade and for the eras coming ahead. If we're going to stay a profession, we're going to continue serving the masses, which we know are, are, what the world needs now is chiropractic. Like you hear us say that. Um, but what chiropractic needs right now is more successful chiropractic CEOs and COOs, right? That's right. So That's we right. need to have that going on, Dr. Steven. It's just so important. So there's a big gap here that I want to make sure that I address. And, you know, we work, with, we've got hundreds of doctors now in our CEO, CEO program. But unfortunately, we don't have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of complement COOs in our COO program, okay? We recognize that gap, right? So there's probably a three to one um, ratio of CEOs to COOs in our program, right? So we got to fix that, right? So because the reality is you cannot be a highly functional, sustainable CEO without a COO, okay? So you just have right. to hear me loud and clear on that. So some of you are sitting there being like, yeah, that sounds great, Franson, but I don't have that person on my team, right? So I'll tell you right now, um, if that's not a now thing, it has to be a next thing. Okay. So mm -hmm. this has to become a high priority for you. Some people are distracted by, oh man, I have to bring in an associate doctor. I'm like, I get that question all the time, Pete. If I've got the option, you know, so who should I bring in first? It sounds like I almost want, should I bring my associate doctor in first or should I, should I get myself a COO? I'm like, no question about it. Right. So bring in that COO first, write that ship. Right. So at the end of the day, you can't fire a cannon from a rowboat, right? You need to build that battleship, right? So that you can bolt on as many cannons as you want, right? So the reality is, is finding that right person to groom to become your COO is going to be a journey as well, right? So um, most people are not in a position where they can go out, nor are they fortunate enough to go out and find somebody who has, oh yeah, I've been the COO in a chiropractic office before. You're just not going to find that, right? So chances are you wouldn't be able to find somebody or afford somebody who's like, oh yeah, I've been a COO in a Fortune 500. You're not going to find that person, right? So you've got you to groom these people 90% of the time, okay? So here's the trajectory, Pete, that I want people to be aware of, right? So, you know, essentially the person who would make a great COO, you heard the attributes that we were describing, very often they're going to show up in your world, in your office as the checkout CA. Okay. So that, listen, that, that person is the high detail person. They love systems. They love structure. They're, 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 they are all business, right? So they're your compliance officer. That's called accountability, right? So typically they'll show up as your checkout CA, right? And that checkout CA, as we've all seen it happen, they have a tendency, even though they're the quieter one, they run that front desk, right? So when they're ready to make their own ascension, there's an ascension that your CAs can make as a career model, right? So there's a career arc for them as well, right? You can give them a runway, right? Just like as a CEO, right? So as the owner, as the DC, you said, I want to make the ascension from owner operator to CEO. Well, set up an ascension for your team members where they can go from being, for example, the checkout CA to the COO, and here's what that ascension very often looks like stepwise. So they go from being that checkout CA who runs the front desk to becoming the back office CA or the business office manager when they're ready to run the practice. When they take on the responsibility of running the team, they become the office manager. And when they take on the responsibility of running the business, they can become the COO. So that's really the stepwise ascension that we see Dr. Pete is check out CA who runs the practice to the back office CA who run, excuse me, that runs the front desk to the back office CA that runs the practice 
to the office manager who runs the team, to the COO that runs the business. And you know, if you're hearing this right now, you'd be like, yes, that's what, that's what I want. I mean, we're here to tell you guys, don't do this on your own. Don't try to figure this out, man. It took us, we're, we've got almost 50 years experience between the two of us and we've been, we live in this space for the last seven years, right? So don't try to figure this out on your own. It's gonna be too much work and too much time and cost too much pain and too much money. So let us help you do that. If you want help to how do I optimize that trajectory? How do I get that check out CA or even your office manager? Maybe it's a business office back office manager. I'd like to make them that office manager who's running my team. I'd love to have somebody who would help me run this business. I really want to become a CEO. Then guys, part and parcel to our CEO program is our COO program. But we have our office manager program. We have our CA training programs, et cetera. At the Remarkable Practice, we're here to fill in that gap. Right? We have the systems, we have the process, we have the program, and we'd love to come alongside you. Because you know, ultimately, we know that you're gonna make a bigger impact when you have the capacity to impact more lives. Right? So you'll make a bigger impact, you'll make a bigger income, you know, and ultimately, this is our purpose. You know, our purpose is to restore health. Restore health of humanity through you. Right? So we, we, you know, for us to fulfill our purpose, uh, we've got to make sure that you can fulfill yours. So on behalf of the Remarkable Practice, we'd love to connect with you. If you'd like to set up a conversation with us to discuss this, explore it, we'll put a link in the show notes below for you to set up a strategy session. Let's get this trajectory set up in your world, in your practice, for you and for your team. Until next time, I'm Dr. Stephen Franson. On behalf of Dr. Pete Camiolo and the Remarkable Practice, God bless. Have a great week. Please stick around for more business insights from this week's bonus interview with our Remarkable Success Partner, dedicated to helping you more successfully help more people. Enjoy. All right, Remarkable CEO Podcast people, I am thrilled to be in the studio today with my friend Adriana from Cairo Matchmakers. And I'm, I was trying to calculate how many emails I've sent to you over the years introducing you to different uh, doctors who are searching for that next great team member. And you, you guys are amazing at helping uh, chiropractors do that. And I just, I'm thrilled to have you on our podcast as a guest today. And I, I'm glad I get to interview you today, Adriana, because I know you've done just such an amazing work with helping doctors build remarkable teams. And um, I know your commitment. So you are a success partner of the Remarkable Practice. And that is why you're here with me today. So again, I just want to tell you, thank you for being a part of helping our doctors help more people and taking the time today uh, to meet with me. First thing I want to do is just have a little, you know, meet and greet. So uh, if you would tell our audience who you are and, and, and who you are as, as part of Cairo Matchmakers, maybe a little bit how you got to this point, I think it'd be awesome for people to get to know you a little bit. Of course. First of all, thank you so much for having me. I am so excited to be a part of your podcast. Uh, at this point, I think we have exchanged hundreds and hundreds of emails. So it is amazing when we can uh, help each other, help more people. Um, my name is Adriana Loya. I am the director of placement for Cairo Matchmakers. I started as a front desk CA over 13 years ago. I completely fell in love with chiropractic and saw the benefits in myself and in my family. Uh, then I became the office manager. And then at, at a point I was running several chiropractic offices in New Mexico. And then, you know, after a few years doing that, uh, we opened up Cairo Matchmakers out of our own need to find the right person for the positions that we had available. And then mainly from our own pain points of losing associates, of, uh, you know, losing great relationships with people that we really loved and cared for but they were just not the person for the position that we had. And so, you know, through learning and a lot of pain, we opened up the company so that we could help more people. I love it. And, uh, and you guys are doing it. And I love that you're speaking from a place of scar tissue. You talked about the pain and I yeah. love that your journey started, you know, as you talked about right at the front desk and you ascended into the position of an office manager here, you are managing multiple clinics and, and dealing with the pain points. So I love that you can relate so much with the, the docs who are listening to this right now. And again, I greatly appreciate um, the work that you do. In, in the Remarkable Practice, Remarkable CEO, we teach the concept of the four rights. You got to get the right person in the right role, doing the right work the right way. And CMM helps, helps doctors do that. Can you share with us a little bit about, you know, it, we talk about how every business exists to solve a problem for a, another person. And the other person for us is 
a chiropractor, right? Or a doctor who's looking to a doctor who's an owner looking to build their team or a doctor who's looking to join a team. Can you talk a little bit about the specific problems that you would say we solve at CMM, uh, Cairo Matchmakers? Um, how would you respond to that? Yeah, so most businesses problems are people problems, right? Yeah. If you don't have the right team in place, you cannot achieve the goals that you want to achieve. So our uh, business is dedicated to helping chiropractors, either business owners that are looking to expand, grow their team, hire the right person so that they, they can put them in the right seat in the bus so that they can do amazing things for the company. And we also help doctors that are looking to join an established, thriving team. Maybe doctors that, you know, they're passionate about being doctors. They want to take care of patients, but they don't really want to run a business. They Or maybe they don't have the experience to run a business. So what we do is we match businesses with talent, uh, whether it's an associate, it's a CA, an office manager, a marketing person, and we match them in a way that ensures that their relationship is going to be successful because the person is going to be naturally hardwired for the type of the job that they're going to take on that practice. And so it's it's amazing to see how we are actually helping those businesses solve their, their people problems. You know, it's interesting. I love the the language that you use matchmaking and, and, and connecting, you know, the talent with the opportunity, getting the right opportunity and the right talent to, to come together. I, I think that's a really important concept. And I like to just talk about that a little bit, because I think a lot of times, you know, as business owners, maybe we've had, you know, maybe even like from your experience, we've, we've, we've had failure in that. Like we've tried to hire in the past, it just hasn't worked out. So we kind of get, you know, disenfranchised with the whole process and we just give up or we just get frustrated with the whole thing. And it's like, well, you know, what, what can you guys do that we don't do? Can you talk a little bit about how you do the matchmaking? Because I think that element is just one of the things that sets you guys apart um, that just makes it truly a remarkable business. Yeah, so what we do is we take a look at the practice style, practice culture, the techniques that the doctor needs to be able to do in the office when talking about matching associates. We also take a look at patient approach. Uh, we match candidates on a behavioral standpoint. So let me give you a very simple example. You know, if, if a practice is looking for a doctor that is able to help them with new patient attraction, new patient conversion, maybe do marketing for them, well, that requires a very special type of person that can do really well in that type of job description. And a lot of times as business owners, we make the mistake of trying to make somebody fit into a job description that really goes against how they're naturally hardwired and they don't do well. And we get frustrated, they get frustrated, then the relationship goes south pretty quickly. And we either end up firing them or they quit on us because they're frustrated within that position. So you need to make sure that you have a very clear job description. What are the main goals for the position? And then you need to find the person that actually matches on a behavioral standpoint so that they're not having to force themselves to do something that they're just really not comfortable with. And so our process goes in depth into what are the practice dynamics? What are the goals for this new hire? Um, are they going to be an associate you know, for a lifetime? Do they need somebody that can help them grow and expand, expand the business? Or do they need somebody that can help them maintain the, the adjustments and the patients that they already have in the practice? And so we look at all of those aspects and then we go find those people that actually fit that uh, innately hardwired type of personality. So what you're basically saying, if I'm, if I'm listening to this and I'm, let's say the, the, a CEO and I'm an owner and I'm looking to maybe bring in some talent in the next you know, three to six months, and you're telling me that you will actually help me understand the type of business and practice that I have so that I can clearly create and identify the role that I'm looking for so that then you can help me find that right fit for that role. Because I think a lot of doctors maybe don't know how to even do that. Like, how do I just describe and determine what the role might be? Um, that I need. Do, are you saying that, that your organization helps us even do, do that part as well? Definitely. That is a huge portion of our process is first, we want to understand you so that we can help you. And sometimes, like you said, business owners, you know, they're so busy running their practices and they know that they need extra help, but they don't really know where they want to go with this. So a lot of what we do is sit down with that practice owner and really help them understand their goals in practice, even if they have an exit strategy and what they want this new person to be able to do in their practice. And then we help them find it. And that's amazing. And then obviously from the talents side, 
thinking about the talent coming in, you talked about how 95% of our problems are people problems. And, you know, we know that I think somewhere in the long, the ballpark of 67% of, you know, associate doctor relationships and badly, um, in other words, they fail, uh, you know, we want to avoid that. And I know that the track record that Chiro matchmakers has is, is significantly higher than that, which is amazing. So you're saying that as a talent coming in, they also have the opportunity to assess and analyze themselves. You're able to assess the talent and say, okay, so I'm clear now on my job description and the role that I have and the functions of that role and what the outcomes are that we want that role to create. Now I can actually also have clarity on does the, is this person the right fit for that? So it's not just about you getting clear as the owner on what it is that you need. It's also you getting clear on who it is that's coming in and seeing do they actually fit. And that's a huge part of what you do, correct? Yeah, a hundred percent. And we also help the talent. We help associate doctors really understand their own practice style, their own goals, wh what type of practice they want to join. Because a lot of times what happens is, you know, the associate, the talent is looking for a position and they join a practice that maybe is not the best fit for their goals and practice. And then the relationship doesn't work out. So we also do a lot of coaching and mentoring with the talent to help build them up and help them understand, okay, this is the type of practice that I want to join. And then if we have that practice, then we get them connected. I mean, so if you're listening to this and you're the owner, I mean, this is just huge, but if you're also considering yourself as let's say the talent who's looking to find a right fit, it's amazing. So they, you know, obviously you're going to want to be connected with an organization like CMM. So you're not just trying to, you know, wing it and figure it out on your own. I mean, get connected with an organization that can actually help you find the right fit for yourself. That's huge. I mean, I know that years ago when I was hiring a bunch of associates and even years and years before that, when I was an associate, none of this even existed. It was just, you just tried to, you know, kind of hope in a prayer that's going to work out, you know, and, uh, and that, that was, you know, how a lot of us, I think, walked through it and it wasn't, wasn't pretty for, for many people. So, you know, we talk a lot in this, in this program and this remarkable CEO uh, podcast here about the limited resources that we have as, as humans and as leaders and how, you know, a CEO will leverage their money to buy someone else's time, energy, and focus so they can, continue to grow and scale their business and carve out maybe just a little bit more time. So a lot of the owners are, who are listening to this are very, very busy. Like you said, they're over leveraged. They, they don't, you know, the time is not on their side. I mean, they're just, they're really just trying to just grab a little bit more here and there. And so this is, this is an issue. And, we, and so we talk a lot about leverage. So what does it look like as a business owner for myself to leverage an organization such as yours? Like what, what does that look like for us to do that? It just, it gives you so much more time freedom. You know, imagine needing to hire a CA or an associate and you're having to sort through hundreds of resumes, post your own ads, do your initial rounds of interviews. I mean, the doctor should spend their time doing what they do best, which is being a doctor and not being a recruiter, right? Uh, doctors went to school to be chiropractors. A lot of them are amazing business owners and they did not go to school to be recruiters. So it is definitely something that needs to be outsourced, uh, something that can be done by somebody else and you can utilize your time better in other areas that are actually producing you a lot of money. And so, you know, what we do is we take the process completely out of the doctor's hands so that they can focus on what they need to focus. And then once we have people that match all the criteria that we're, that they are looking for, then we present them to them. And then it's pretty easy for them to go through the next round of interviews and then choose who they want to hire instead of the business owner having to do all of the groundwork and the data sifting. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, a, it's a crazy amount of time that it takes to sort through so many candidates. And, and I'll speak to the loneliness. Like it feels very lonely and overwhelming and daunting to just even think about hiring. And a lot of people just say, I don't even want to worry about that. And they just settle for, well, I guess I'll just stay kind of at this stage in my practice. And, right. you know, it's with, with, with Cairo matchmakers, it seems like, Hey, you've got a partner now. You're not alone. Like we're on your team. You're hiring us. We're actually on your team as a recruiter. And we're not going to, you know, we're not going to send you somebody unless, you know, it fits the, the criteria that we've determined together and, uh, and then that enables me to know like, Hey, I can stay focusing on my current team and my current business and building that while on the other side, your team is working on finding us the next right fit for the positions that we have available. That's just awesome. That's leverage folks. Um, you're speaking into our listening, Adriana, you got, you are, uh, for sure doing that. And we love again, that we get to uh, be a part of, uh, helping our doctors help more people by using leverage and leveraging Cairo Matchmaker. So last question I have for you, bonus question. How do our listeners get in contact with you? What's the best way to do that? 
So our website is www.chiromatchmakers.com. Um, my name is Adriana, Adriana at chiromatchmakers.com. Awesome. All right, crew. So another uh, incredible podcast episode and an incredible interview with Adriana from Cairo Matchmakers. You heard it said here, if you're looking to grow your team and build that remarkable team, which again, to have a remarkable business, you got to have a remarkable team. Cairo Matchmakers is here to help you. Again, we're so grateful for you being a success partner uh, with us and being a part of our podcast and making our podcast more awesome and amazing. For all of you listeners, thank you for joining us this week. And we look forward to picking up with our next episode next week. Until then, God bless. Thank you. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Remarkable CEO Podcast. Remember, what the world needs now is chiropractic. And what chiropractic needs now is more successful chiropractors. If you like this podcast, please subscribe, share with a friend, and leave us a review. And if you'd like to connect with us personally, direct message us on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Instagram. Now go and be remarkable.